in the in the lectures that we are going to have from now on to the end of the semester there is going to be a shift in the conversation so far we have been looking at combinational logic so things moving from one side to the other inputs to the outputs f or your logic expressions are directly dependent on the combination of the present inputs we are going to change that conversation now we are going to see if we can actually store data whether we can uh, build logic circuits that have the ability to change the information and more importantly store the information so latches is your basic element the first one that allows you to store one bit of information that's it the basic element to store one bit of information Now a couple of things here, if you understand latches well, you will understand everything that follows well, meaning flip flops, registers, counters, finance state machines, everything will start because it's all based on latches, which is the basic one. So, you know, I'm going to try to, uh, you know, talk about latches, uh, you know, in a lot of detail. Uh, so hang with me. What have we covered so far? We did number systems, we did some computer codes, we did uh, CMOS circuits, then we looked at Boolean algebra. We were not really happy with how Boolean algebra was not very uh, systematic. So we also looked at KMAPs, which gave us a very systematic approach to uh, logic simplification or logic minimization. And then we looked into uh, PLAs, decoders, encoders, tried state devices, multiplexers, and then some videos regarding comparators and adders. We are going to see a category called sequential circuits next. So, so far we have been here in this world, combinational logic, where circuits whose output are a function or combination of the current inputs, which means outputs one or more outputs depend on combination of present inputs I don't know if this term current uh, <laughs> confuses you that's not the current voltage resistance it is current is present um, so that was combinational logic but now we are adding this sequential logic to our list where circuits in which outputs are a function of present inputs but also the sequence of past inputs right hence the term sequential so present inputs and sequence of past inputs so when you think of this uh, think about a, a a circuit that is um, you know a, a lock right a, a digital circuit that is uh, allowing you to uh, push in certain numbers uh, to give access to a room and if you have to gain access to a room then you have to press one number, then another number, another another digit, and the fourth digit, right? Four digits, for example. In that case, you not only have to respond to the most recent input, you actually have to keep track of the inputs that were before that, past inputs as well. Uh, guys, do there is a lot of chatter on the chat box. Do I need to worry about this or I move on? Uh, I don't worry about move on. All right, thank you. Uh, now, they contain storage elements and they contain feedback connections. Now, the way I like to think about memory or uh, implementing memory in circuits is the same way you would be expected to memorize something. 
if I asked you guys to memorize something, what would you have to do? <laughs> write it 20 times. All right. Revision. Right? If I asked you guys to re uh, rework it. All right. So you would spend a lot of time revising, right? In other words, you are looking at the same information again and again. Uh, it's as if, so think about this, uh, after. So think about a conveyor belt, right? So let's put a conveyor belt in here. And let us say the conveyor belt is moving uh, left to right. And there is a box. Okay, so there is a box on the conveyor belt. And I've placed that box over here. You are right here. I'm going to do an excellent drawing of someone who is looking at a box on the conveyor belt, not an AND gate, uh, a box on the conveyor belt. And the conveyor belt is moving, right? Now, if this guy has to look at this box again after, say, a minute, what would it need to do? Well, one way of doing, uh, one way of uh, getting that done is take the box, put it over here and then wait for a few minutes. It is going to anyway come over here because the uh, conveyor belt is moving left to right. You guys see that? So, that function, why do things move from left to right in circuits? Because you have connected one thing after the other. And one, when you change your inputs, the outputs of the logic gates are going to change based on that. So you are able to see that. Now, how is this particular thing accomplished in uh, circuits? The, 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 the way we do that is through feedback. So if you have feedback, then you are looking at the same information that was there earlier again after some time so memory is being implemented using feedback so far whatever we have seen did not have any feedback connection things were only moving from left to right one way from inputs all the way to outputs now you are going to see connections coming back there it is so this is a plot diagram of a sequential network when you see this term sequential, all that means is it has memory, right? And that memory can be of different forms. It can be synthesized, it can, it can be implemented using a variety of storage elements. So those storage elements, which could be latches, that's where we are going to start, latches. And then we are going to use latches to build flip-flops. And then using flip-flops, we will make registers. And using flip-flops, we will also make counters. So all of those uh, components have storage ability, have the capacity to memorize information. But it's not for a very long time. It is for a temporary basis. It don't, so don't uh, think of it as RAM, ROM. Think of it as uh, something you need for temporary basis, right? Not for too long. Uh, absolutely volatile. Absolutely volatile. Yes. But even for uh, RAM, RAM is also volatile. But, the, but that has a different uh, way uh, to do things. So don't think of RAM and ROM. when it, Don't think of mass storage when you when you think of this. This is for very, very few bits, one bit of information, four bits of information, eight bit registers and so on. All right. So what is happening in this block diagram? You have some inputs here. You have some combinational network over here and then you have outputs over here. That was OK. As far as we our, our conversation uh, from earlier in the course, uh, this is sort of what we saw, right? Um, inputs going into a combinational network, driving these outputs. Mm, programmable ROM? Uh, not ROM at all though. 
Um, now what we are adding is, let us take some of the outputs of this combinational network. We are calling that next state. Maybe we are interested in storing them, but we are able to store them because we are connecting something in a feedback loop back into the combinational network. So you have next state and current state. You will hear this terminology several, several times. Next state and current state. Uh, think of opening a lock. Lock is uh, unlocked, that's a state. Locked, that's a state. Alarm, that's a state, right? So things are going to be moving from one state to the other. So next state and current state. Current state is fed back into the combinational network which determines the next state. This may happen based on an input becoming active or it might be synced with a clock, a timing uh, circuit. But this is where we are going to be, right? This is what we have already done. This is where we are going to be. And we are going to look at the basic form of storage, which is the latch. Now let's talk about propagation delay because when I said put things on to a conveyor belt, uh, there was a delay, right? Between the time you push it, move the box uh, a little bit before and then you let it come in front of you, there was a delay. And that delay in our context is the propagation delay of a logic gate. Uh, Arnav says, how does the network work when you run it the first time, is there some default variables that the network uses? Oh, so sometimes you are able to predict what the output is going to be. In some times you have to assume. Um, so it's not always one or the other. All right, so let's consider this particular buffer. Uh, input is Y. Output is Y, of course. You have some propagation delay through this buffer and we are calling that T sub PD. Now, suppose the input of the buffer is set to Y. What would happen? Well, after some small amount of time, maybe a few nanoseconds, the output will become Y. We know this. And now, we are actually going to take advantage of delay. We are actually going to see this, that delay actually helps us, helps us store information. So it's not all bad. Now the way a storage element is built is by doing a feedback. So what we are doing is still have the same buffer but now we are going to see if we what happens if we connect the output back to its own input. Connect input output back to its own input. What would happen? Well, think about this. Let me make that connection over here. Maybe in blue. Right? So if I connect it back to it, let us say initially I have a way to make this into a one. So I figured out a way to make input Y a one. Once I make this into a one, the output over here becomes a one after this propagation delay, which is now going to hold the input at one. And this is going to be in a circular loop, right? So as long as you not make it a zero at the input, you are going to have this one stored in that particular buffer. That's the kind of feedback we are going to leverage to, synth to implement latches. Output connected back into the input. But this is not very useful, right? So we cannot, uh, why is this not very useful? Uh, let's talk about that too. If you are 
if you are trying to store one bit of information store one bit what are the various things that you want to do what would you want to store when you say one bit what would you want to store can i say that zero or a one right so i would want to store a zero or i would want to store a one those are my two choices but before I actually store a zero or store a one, I actually have to make a zero, right? So make a zero and store it. Or my other option is make a one and store it. But over here, I don't have really a good way to control what is my input, when is my output changing. So I need to add more things to a simple buffer connected back to its own input. But this is sort of illustrating that this feedback could help us do this repeated in, indefinitely. Um, and it would become, it's independent of the value of y, right? So if this is zero, then it will be zero. Uh, going through the loop or if it is a one one is going through the loop um, let's see a buffer is already an wait so add another feedback loop to a buffer does that even do anything so uh, the buffer is right so Andrew has uh, uh, answered your question we are actually synthesizing a buffer using four CMOS um, transistors, right? So the difference between analog and digital is uh, coming into picture here. All right, so that's not very useful. Let's try to see where this buffer actually comes in. The buffer with a propagation delay of TPD is actually made by two NOT gates connected back to back the output of the second NOT gate fed back into the first one. Now it has uh, some stable states, this one. So for example, if I make this guy a one, right? If I make this guy a one, somehow I figure out a way to make this a one. This guy will be a, a zero after half of the propagation delay. And then this guy will be a one after another half propagation delay that would be a stable state why is it stable because one goes to a zero zero becomes a one one goes back it's going to continue to be in that state until i go in and change something so that's stable state the other case is if i figure out a way to make this input a zero this will be a 1 after some time and this will be a 0 after some time but this will also be a stable state. So if I connect two NOT gates back to back I have got two stable states. It's called a bi-stable configuration because it, it has got two stable states. Uh, pretty stable. All right. So connecting things in feedback is allowing us to get some stability and we are also able to store, right? So we are going to look at the simplest sequential circuit here. Uh, not very useful uh, because we will not be able to change the inputs very easily, but it will still do the job of storing information for us. So what we see here is two NOT gates that are connected in a cross-coupled configuration. Let me write that for you. Two cross-coupled NOT gates.
the output of the first NOT gate is connected to the input of the second one. The output of the second one is connected to the input of the first one. We are using Q over here and Q underscore L over here to indicate that output of this bistable element is available in true form as well as the complemented form. So let me highlight that and talk about these two. Q and Q complement. So this is your true form. True form of output. And this is complemented form of output. Uh, I just realized you could make this in a line and it could be so much easier to understand it. All right, so we have a few things to discuss about this. There's a reason why this bistable uh, element has been drawn this way because we are going to expand on this, right? So um, let us suppose we find a way to make this V in one, the input to the first NOT gate a one right so suppose we have uh, a connection here where we say all right let's make this into a one so when i make this a one what would be v out one or q a zero right so a zero comes over here and that zero actually is an input to this second guy right and that zero will make v out 2 into a 1 and you can see uh, this 0 and this 1 are complements of each other this is is this going to be stable or not is this conf is this setting going to be stable if i put this a 1 a 0 there a 0 there a 1 there is this going to be stable? Yes, absolutely. If I don't change anything, this is going to be stable. What does an unstable situation look like? Uh, no, no, no. So, so when I say this is stable, I'm talking about the fact that Q is going to remain at zero and Q underscore L is going to remain at one, right? It's not going to be going back and forth between a one and a zero. It's not like zero, one, zero, one. It's not flipping around. It is going to be stay there as long as I keep this a one. Now let us suppose, so that would be one of the two stable states. What is the second one? Let me make this into a zero. So if I figure out a way to make this input V in one, a zero, what would be Q? A one and that one will appear here and that will make this into a zero and now this would be your second stable state again the outputs q and q underscore l are complements of each other so as long as you are going to keep this input at zero this is going to be your second stable state when so what are the two stable states uh two states two stable states are when q is 0 and when q is 1 right so those are your two stable states uh, what if someone decides to hook something up to v in 2 well you are absolutely right i can't do that in this particular configuration i'm just talking about the fact that this cross coupled configuration will allow you to achieve two stable states this has some problem we'll talk about that uh but you're absolutely right you 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 need you need to have more control over the input to the bottom logic gate a not gate is not going to cut it because it's just one input and we are using that for feedback connection anyway so we need some other logic gates for example nor that have more than one input that's how we gain control over this uh, bistable element. Uh, a, a couple, uh, one more thing that I would not want to, you guys to uh, note. Q 
as we used Q for naming the transistors, we also use Q to talk about the outputs of a sequential element, no matter what it is, latch or flip-flop or counter or register, we will use Q to indicate the output of those elements. We talked about this, when, when you're trying to store, uh, what are you trying to do? You're trying to do these two things, right? So when you're trying to store one bit of information, you want to do one of these two things. Make things into a zero and store it. Make things into a one and store it. Now let's talk a little bit more about that cross-coupled NOT gate configuration. Um, because there is a problem. Apart from the two stable states, there is a meta-stable state in that configuration. Meta-stability is essentially uh, stability on knife's edge. So it's, it's, it's stable but under very strict conditions. So wh what I'm going to do is, I'm going to over here maybe redraw our um, not gates, not gate here, output, output, input, input. This guy was connected over here, and then this guy was connected over here. So this is my the same uh, cross-coupled NOT gate configuration um, and I had Q over here, Q underscore L over there. Let us, see, uh, you guys recognize what this graph is, right? This is the CMOS characteristic of a NOT gate. My When your input is low, so this is your CMOS characteristic of one NOT gate. CMOS characteristics of NOT gate. When input is low, output is high. When input is high, output is low. There needs to be a cursor tool in GoodNotes. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's my iPad today, which is not responding very quickly, um, it's glitching out a lot today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this particular thing is your laser pointer. Um, it's there are some other issues happening. All right. So let's let's start let's start with this. What if the input is right in the center? right over here uh, this guy this point is 2.5 comma 2.5 so if i make this input 2.5 what would be the output? This is 2.5. What would be the output? 2.5. That is the input to this guy. Or, so what would be the output here? So everything is going to be 2.5, right? So if you have 2.5 here, there's 2.5 there, there's 2.5 there, there's 2.5 there, which will again keep this at 2.5, right? So everything is going to be very stable. However, only at that point, but nothing really is exactly 2.5. What if you have very, very small amount of noise in your system, which changes your 2.5 to 2.4? What would happen then? Or 2.3, what would happen then? 
let's try to take a look at that so i'm i'm going to try to track so that 2.5 situation is happening right at the center so i will start with talking about what would happen if this changes to 2.3 i don't know what what is here what is here what is here right so all i know is this input to the top not gate for some reason due to some noise in the system changed from 2.5 to 2.4 or 2.3 right so from from here the input right earlier it was here 2.5 it changed here right it went here what would happen to the output q will it will it stay at 2.5 or will it change increase right okay so it will increase so let's say we how, how far will it increase right so this was 2.5 uh this is 2 right so 2.3 is somewhere here so it increased pretty significantly don't you think somewhere over there right so maybe we can assume 4 right so suppose it, this q earlier it was 2.5 now it has become 4 volts now that 4 actually appears at the input of the bottom not gate so what would that 4 make q underscore l the input is 4 what would be low right very very low almost like 0 0.2 maybe right Uh, is right here right 4 is so this is 3.5 this is 5 so it's uh, this is this would be 4 4.5 right so it will right here right so it's 0 0.2 very very small so if this is 0 0.2 which is being fed back to this guy will this change now the 2.3 is now going to be 0 0.2 if that is 0 0.2 what would happen here at Q, we'll go to five exactly. That five will come here, and that five will make this zero. That zero will go there. This so now you see. You are going to you went from the meta stable state, which was right in the middle, to one of the stable states zero, five, five, and zero. That is going to be stable now. So noise in this circuit causes a lot of problems. Well, it, it is going to have a problem like this. When you were at the top of the mountain or right, the, 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 the knife's edge, our input was 2.5, everything was 2.5, right? And we were fine. It was stable under that condition that everything has to be 2.5. But the moment something changed, you came down this way or you went down that way. But until you went to this state or this state, you were unstable. You were stable here, you were stable here, you were stable here. You were actually meta stable here because there were lots of uh, constraints. Yes, yeah. So this is your meta stable state. This is your stable state or this is your stable state. So right now, where did we go? Right. So when the input became smaller, right, we went this way. For the top chip, we went this way. Now, if the input, instead of going from 2.5 to 2.3 earlier, if it went from 2.5 to 2.7, we would have gone to the other stable state. Right? So you either go, uh, you know, down or up right so you either go this way or you could go this way but you will keep going until you get to that stable state zero five five zero or five zero zero five you guys see that so cross coupled configuration has this uh, problem of meta stability being stable under some strict conditions 
So this is what we have been talking about, right? Uh, this is an inherent thing in a bi-stable element. We started over here, we went there to the stable state, or we went here to the stable state. Uh, so two stable points, one meta stable point. That's what we tried to uh, analyze using a cross coupled, two cross coupled not gates configuration. All right. And you can think of it as the top of the mountain or a nice edge, right? If you're top of the mountain, a little bit push over here or a little bit push over here will uh, roll you down the mountain to get to a stable state here or here. But once you get to that stable state, you're fine. Like you, after that, there is no problem. There's no meta stability in the stable states. Now, why are we harping about meta stability? Well, the, the issue is that there are going to be timing constraints in uh, sequential circuits, very similar to the setup and hold times that we talked about those kind of limitations about when can an input change before or after another thing changes in a circuit that will cause meta stability uh, would the meta stable state be larger for a non ideal gate a meta stable state would be absent for a non ideal gate uh, for an ideal gate would this metastable state be larger? Yes, for a non-ideal gate, metastable state is larger. You don't want that metastable state, right? Because that is going to um, make your output become unstable in a realistic scenario. You don't want that. So yeah, your statement is correct. But that is going to happen in our sequential elements due to the user breaking certain hold time or setup time requirements which we will need to follow uh, while using latches and flip-flops. So I'll talk more about that when we start doing the timing uh, diagrams for uh, latches and flip-flops. All right, so we have about uh, 12 minutes remaining. Uh, so let, let us see how far we get with this discussion, but this is our nor version of the SR latch. So why S, why R? What do you think S and R stand for? Reset instead. Good. So S stands for set, R stands for reset, and a latch stands for latch on a door to make sure that nothing goes in or out, right? So latch is essentially storing one bit of information. So next question. We were over here. We were trying to use a cross coupled not gate configuration. Why do we need to go for a cross coupled nor gate configuration? Why do we need to do that jump? This is a cross coupled nor gate. Uh, hard to reset inputs, right? So to con to gain control over the inputs. Earlier, we didn't have a very good way of changing inputs. Now we have a way to influence the inputs. Why would we need to do that? Well, you guys said I need to make a zero or make a one, maybe a different color. So I need to be able to influence the output. Then I also need to store it. So making the output into a zero, what should I call that? S or R? Making the output a zero should I call it set or should I call it reset? I should call it reset, right? And making the output into a one, I should call that a set state. Uh, what should I call this green state? Store. 
So right away you have a store or, or hold or memory. Different textbooks talk about different things, store or hold or memory. You have set state for a latch, a reset state for a latch and a store or hold or memory state. Uh, what do you mean Q? Q question mark or store, right? So Q is zero here, Q is one here. Q equals previous Q here. Right? So whatever the output was earlier should continue to be the same. Could have been a zero, could have been a one. But over here, it doesn't matter. Force it to be a zero, force it to be a one. All right, let's come back to this. Now, we need some things to control. We have added two controls. Reset input, set input. There are two outputs exactly the same way as we had two outputs earlier. Q and QN. The true form and the complemented form. Now there are two versions to a latch. One is the NOR version in which you connect two cross-coupled NOR gates with each other in a cross-coupled manner. The cross coupled essentially means output of one is controlling input of the other and output of the bottom one is controlling input of the first one. That's cross coupling. And there are NOR gates over here. Now, what I want to do is spend some time trying to analyze this. It might look very simple, right? Two NOR gates. Who would have thought that analyzing two NOR gates would be difficult? So it turns out that it is more complex than you think for certain situations. So I'm going to spend some time talking about an, an, analyzing this SR latch to eventually derive this characteristic table or the next state table, characteristic table of the SR latch. No more truth tables. Truth tables work for combinational logic. For sequential logic, you have characteristic table or next state tables. Let's do the analysis. Let's at least start, start the analysis first. So the SR latch analysis for the NOR version. So you are using two NOR gates over here in a cross coupled uh, configuration. Because we are using NOR gates, it is important to review a special property of a NOR gate, which is if any input is high, then the output is low, irrespective of the other input. I don't even have to worry about what the other input is. I don't have to go looking. If one of the inputs is one, the output is low. One of the inputs is one, one of the inputs is one. Well, both inputs are one. The output is low in all these three cases. However, if the input is zero, one of them is a zero, I have to wait for the other input to come in. And only when I know that both inputs are zero, I will be able to tell you that the output is one. But if I know one of the inputs is one, I don't have to wait for the other input to come in. So that's a very important property that you will see play out at multiple times during this analysis. We will do this analysis in three cases. Case one is my R input is one, my S input is zero. I want to find out what happens to my Q and my QN. Another thing that I want to find out is, will I be able to store this or not. So when R is, so R, this guy, R is 1 is connected here and S is 0 is connected here. So we have, I have made R1, S is 0. Can you guys tell me right away what is Q? Uh, 
All right, Q is zero. Why is Q zero? Because R is one, right? One of the inputs of the R NOR gate was one. And if I know one of the inputs, I don't need to wait about wait for the second input to come in. I can tell you directly that the output is going to be zero. Now, another question that I want to ask is, when did this output Q change to zero? Suppose I make this a one into a one. Uh, when R changed to one. Uh, okay, when r changed to 1 right so uh, let us say that r changed to 1 r became 1 at time t sub 0 when does q become a 0 does it depend uh, does it become 0 at t sub 0 or does it dip become 0 at t sub 0 plus t p d where t p d is the propagation delay of this guy T delay. That's right. So, this becomes the one here. This guy becomes a zero after the propagation delay of the NOR gate. Alright, let me erase this because confusing later on. Alright, so this zero actually appears over here, right? So this guy is going to be a zero here. This was a zero and we figured out that this is a zero. So can you guys tell me what QN is going to be? QN is going to be a one. Um, is this going to be a stable state? One, zero, zero, one. That one goes here. That one with one keeps it at zero. That zero with this zero will keep this at one, right? So as long as I have R as one and S as zero, my Q will be reset to zero and the complemented form of Q, which is QN, will be one and is going to be stable, right? So you see, we have reset the output. You see that? Q equals, Q equals zero and QN equals one. That's your reset A. Now, let us try to store it. Uh, let's try to store q equals 0. You see, we are trying to do one of those three things, right? You said make a 0, store it. Make a 1, store it. We made a 0, we are trying to store it. And the way you store things is by making both the inputs zero. S zero and R zero. When you make S equals zero and R equals zero, my claim right now is that the output Q will be stored. Let us see if that actually happens. This guy has changed to a zero. This guy was a zero and it continues to be a zero, right? When I make that change of this guy, and let's suppose I make that change at time T1, at exactly that same time T1, can you guys tell me what is available here? The other side is a 1, so the output will still be a 0. Exactly. This guy hasn't changed yet, right? This change happened at T1. At T1, this guy doesn't change. Maybe this guy will change and that guy will change. It, it is going to take you some time for it to get, for it to try to change. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But at the moment, as you're changing the input, this guy is not going to change. So you see here, propagation delay is actually helping you store things, right? Because this one is going to be available over here at this point. So from before, this one is still there. 
Oh, no. It would not work. Because things will... No delay is non-ideal. Right? So, no matter what, there will be some de delay. Uh, in other words, how can you predict the future without seeing it? Like th th that would be, that that would be breaking the timeline. So that one will be available here. So even though you change this to zero, this one is going to stay there from before, which will keep this at a at a zero, right? So if this is a one, we know that one of the inputs is a one the output will be a zero so that will con keep this at a zero now if this is a zero that appears over here this is a zero which means that this one will continue to be a one you guys see that and now if you observe this was last Q uh, maybe I need to reverse this arrow that's your previous output is the same as new output Last Q equals new Q, hence forward. You see that? So I hope you see that propagation delay is actually the reason why we are able to get this um, memory to work. Uh, are the blue, are the blue all of the bit values at T1 after T1, right? So after that change. So at T1 we changed it from one to zero. This guy changes, this guy continues to be a zero, right? So no change there. Uh, this, no change there, no change there, right? So there, there's only one time uh, things get changed for R. Everything else is remaining the same. So if you, if you sketched the timing waveform for this, everything would stay the same except for R. Uh, so the blue, I used blue to indicate that you, after you went through that reset state, when you tried to do the store state, you had to change this to a zero. This didn't change because of that. That didn't change because of that. That didn't change because of that. So Q, new Q is last Q. Here I can say, too big. That's your store state. So we can do a reset, make a zero, store it. Um, we are actually out of time here. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, all right. But when we meet again on Friday, we will see that we can do a set and store um, and we'll try, try to look at some uh, problems with the RS latch and then we'll try to fix that problem by going and finding out other types of latches uh, so please use this uh, uh, next couple of days to uh, read the notes that I've posted before class uh, so all this analysis is done over there if you are able to follow along with the analysis of this SR latch, believe me, uh, your flip -flop understanding of flip flops, registers, counters will all be based on this. Um, so take this seriously, is what I'm saying. Uh, all right, I'm gonna stop recording here. I will see you guys on.